Come on, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Uh, you know, Luke's writing is so vivid. Luke is a physician. He's a physician. He's a doctor. He's an internist. But his writing gives such a great depiction of the struggle and the humanity, but yet the divinity of one we have called our elder brother, uh, who happens to be our savior, and hopefully your Lord as well. And so we, we, we unfold these stories. There's, there's some verses I want to read to you, so stay with me. Uh, Luke chapter 4, reading from the Good News Translation. You may follow us on the screen. Um, if you don't have your smart device or uh, the, the, the old pages of our historical Bible. Luke 4, verse 1, Jesus returned from the Jordan, full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. And all that time he ate nothing, so that he was hungry when it was over. The devil said to him, if you are God's son, order this stone to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, human beings cannot live on bread alone. Mm. Then the devil took him up and showed him in a second all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all the, this power and all this wealth, the devil told him. It has all been handed over to me, and I can give it to anyone I choose. Look at the conversation. All this was all this will be yours then if you worship me. And Jesus responds, the scripture says, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Verse 9, and the devil then took him to Jerusalem out of the wilderness, be mindful, out of the wilderness to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple, said to him, if you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, from here. For the scripture says, God will order his angels to give, to, to take good care of you. It also says they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. He responds, don't tempt God. 13, when the devil finished tempting Jesus in every way, he left him for a while. And Jesus, Jesus then returned to Galilee. And the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. And the news about him spread throughout all the territory. And finally, verse 15, he taught in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. Praised by everyone. That doesn't last long, does it? <laughs> you may take your seats as we share together with you on this day. Uh, I simply want to uh, keep and draw your attention to the subject this morning. It's not a fair trade. It's just not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade. We live in a world where there are always competing stories opposition that simply opposes my win, my presence, or my goals. We live in such a competing world that most of us, if not all of us, would have to know what we are working with in order to resist the false stories and the trinkets that sparkle but won't last very long. We live in such a competitive society that we must know that we have the capacity to win. We also must know that if we don't do what is necessary, we have the capacity to lose. We have to somehow define who or what we stand with and stand on. Life, and there are moments that are so contentious between what we should be and what we want to be. And sometimes if you 
are walking with God, they actually line up together. What I should be is actually what I want to be. These things are brought into alignment when God is a major factor in your life. Our text today, church, for many of us, we've heard it in church school, vacation Bible school, or we've heard it from the pulpits of many, many, from many different preachers. But the text today notes that Jesus was in the desert, led into the desert by the Holy Spirit, a place, a place of divine, divine meeting and demonic danger. He was led into something, led into somewhere, into the wilderness. Dry, barren, uncultivated, a place where it wasn't conducive for human life and growth. It's interesting as you follow me and help me look at this text today, I, I, I love it, uh, that Jesus is led by the Spirit into the place where he would be tempted. He's led by the Spirit. He's led by divine measures, by a divine presence. He's led by the part of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. The Holy Spirit leads him, guides him now, but he's being led and he will eventually face demonic danger. Can I just parenthetically just say this and just kind of help you today? that even when you're being led by the Holy Spirit into a decision, into a move, into a different atmosphere, in a different environment, on a different level, demonic damage or danger still lurks as long as you hear on earth. Please do not Please do not uh, misinterpret scripture because if the Lord leads you, does not mean that you won't have to fight or to resist or withstand something in life. God led you to him. God led you to her. But please don't think that there are moments when you don't have to pray, Lord, help me to keep my sanity. Here it is, church. We find now that as Jesus Jesus is driven by a divine meeting. He also now must face demonic danger for 40 days. Now, if you understand the Greek text, the Greek text indicates that Jesus fasted and he was famine. He fasted and he became so famished by his honoring God. Listen to this. He became so famished because he was serving God, he was fasting that now he finds himself depleted. Yo, help me somebody. Jesus becomes vulnerable and the one who meets Jesus in this vulnerable physical place is none other than the devil. I don't know. I don't know if all of you believe in him, but but I, I have come to know him quite well. At one point in my life, he was a real close friend of mine. He led me, and I and I followed him without a hesitation. Matter of fact, I enjoyed some of the things he presented into my life. It's just me telling my story. I don't know about you, but I'm just saying it's my story. Here it is that that Jesus encounters in this physical barren place, the devil, the spirit, the devil does not have uh, a red a suit or a pitchfork. The devil, the devil can take any form that is necessary to convince you that he's real. Yeah, he's, he's a spirit and as the demonic was part of the desert wilderness context, it only underlines the fact that we will all encounter the possibility of compromise when God is trying to mature our character. Man, I love what John Maxwell says when he talks about the wilderness experience. And John Maxwell says uh, some things. He said the wilderness is important and it is, it is, it is, it is important to your health and your wealth and your future, he names five things, he says, because we learn discipline 
and the act or the act of depending on God. Y'all got that? He says we learn discipline and the art, rather, of depending on God. And two, he says we learn about different seasons of growth and not gratification. The, three, the third thing he says, that, that, that the wilderness, the barrenness is important, that we have to go through seasons of drought, go through seasons of famine. We have to go through seasons of not sure, not positive, not adequate. Why? Because he said, because, because it breaks us. It breaks self-sufficiency and self-promotion. Y'all help me, I'm, I, okay. Then the fourth thing he says that is important is because we learn to be more sensitive, compassionate to the needs of others when we now face our own vulnerability. Y'all help me. The fifth thing he says, it solidifies our sense of mission. So do you quit when you're on a mission or have you forgotten the mission because you're being tempted? Y'all oh, help me. Do you forfeit the mission because now it's uncomfortable? Do you forfeit the goal? Do you give up, turn over, look for a new boo because this boo isn't all that you thought he or she would be? Mm. You have to stay close to the mission. You have to know the mission. You got to be close to the covenant in order to know that but, but the joy that is set before me, I got to endure this. You got to know, no, 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 your purpose, know your goal. He names those things, and I, I, oh man, he names those things, and, and, and it's, it's such an interesting text today, because there's a dialogue between the devil and Jesus happening while he's being led by the Holy Spirit. I know some of y'all real saved folk, I know some of y'all real saved folk would never say, the devil interrupts my conversations with God. I know you would never say that, but I know that I've had times in my life and times in my prayer closet that I'm praying and praying, and somehow the thought of cutting grass enters my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm praying, I'm praying, and the thoughts of my next responsibility enters my mind where the enemy is trying to distract my connection with my strength. There are moments when I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to do good, Lord. I'm trying to do good, but evil is still present. Here it is. The, the storyline tells us about this moment when the devil has this dialogue with Jesus, and Jesus is entertaining the dialogue. Oh, help me. Jesus is entertaining the dialogue because he finds himself gravitating toward what is being offered, but then rejects the offer. Now, now I, I know some of y'all will say that Jesus, no, he wasn't tempted. No, no you, you're missing. The Bible says that he was tempted in Hebrews in every fashion, in every manner that we were. He was tempted in order to win, to show us how we can defeat those things that are luring us into darkness to steal our very purpose and to steal our momentum and to steal our covenant. Y'all help me. Y'all help me. Here it is, He's, the devil offers a storyline of self-indulgence. Just have a good time and have it your way. Make yourself bread from these stones. The he, devil talks about self-aggrandizement. He says, all, all of this I'll give to you because it's been turned over to me. Even Satan realizes that the spirit of this world has been turned over to him and he has dominion until Christ returns. He acknowledges that in our text. Meanwhile, Jesus stands there and he gives response to all three temptations. He lets Satan know unequivocally that I, I, I desire what you have to offer, but it's not a fair trade. <laughs> y'all, okay, y'all, y'all. He responds, he responds with this, this confidence. The confidence that he responds with does not negate his actual need. 
but his confidence and conviction overrides what he needs in order to get it God's way. I wish you, I wish we were in yesterday's church. I could just tap your neighbor, but you can't do it today. So just stand right there, sit right there. It's worth remembering that Jesus is representing God. He's God's son. Now, in, in the historic ancient world, and many of us are familiar with it in our own families, it's worth remembering that in the families of the ancient world, an adult son was often understood as the father's representative, and the father and the son would work together to accomplish the family goals. The son's, listen, the son's identity, honor, and status is rooted in his family's honor and status. I'm going somewhere with this. You got to stay with me. Here it is. Jesus represents his father. He understands that his identity, his honor, and status is rooted in his family's honor and status. I would have quit, but somebody in the family needed me to persevere. I say you. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you wanted to, but somebody in your family connection needed you to stand your ground to be unmovable. Even while bleeding, even while crying, even while mourning, they needed you to hold the line. They needed you to toe the line. They needed you to stand there because their livelihood and their future was also predicated upon who they are tethered with. Oh, God, don't you know that the strength of your team is, 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 is connected to who's on your team? Okay, y'all, y'all, okay. Here it is. Jesus now gets to a place where he, he, he handles the temptation. He gains these things in a way that he does not want to breach his covenant with his father. Jesus' life is grounded, church. And in, in, in Luke 3, 21, Jesus goes to the Jordan. He's baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And at this moment, we hear these words. When he's baptized, he comes up. The heavens split open. Uh, a dove descends. The voice of God is heard saying that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Because at that moment, and the dove, the dove, the dove that represents the Holy Spirit landed upon him. And now from that moment, Jesus is led into to the wilderness. You got to understand that God isn't going to put you in a place to be tempted or tested when he does not know you are able to say no. The mere fact that God allows it is telling you that you can say not a not today. Y'all y'all still with me? I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I got I'm almost there. This is something here. Jesus' life is grounded uh, because he recognizes that his baptism uh, solidifies his connection with his father. The world could see it now that he's baptized by his cousin and the Holy Spirit descends upon him. And then in chapter four, he's led into a testing moment. Every moment of your success, every successful moment, every time the Lord does something wonderful for you, there's a test around the next corner. The Lord wants to know, do you love me or do you love the things I've done for you? Man, y'all got to help me because sometimes we find God in such, in such an unusual place that we find him to be stronger in the unusual places than he is in the usual places. Notice something here that both Jesus, I'm coming y'all, that both Jesus and the devil. I just read 15 scriptures to you all, verses to you all. Notice something that as they dialogue together, now come on, I wish you'd be honest. Now how many of us have had a dialogue with Satan over the last month or so? Don't even raise your hand. I raised both of mine for you and for me. We've had some dialogues about shortcuts. Some dialogues about compromise. Some dialogues about who will ever know. Some dialogues about life itself. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm okay. Jesus has legitimate needs. He, the brother been fasting. The brother has been, I fast half a day and I'm starving. The 
The brother had been fasting half a day. I mean, he'd been fasting 40 days. Can you imagine? Now, come on. Right, some of y'all real sanctified, saved for misquote scripture. Some of y'all think just because he's, he's Jesus, he doesn't get hungry. My Jesus never gets hungry. He's my bread when I'm hungry. Huh? Really? No, y'all got a wrong picture of who Jesus is. No, Jesus is hungry. 40 days, this brother fast. He's hungry. He's physically hungry. But yet, he understands that my physical appetite can never compromise my spiritual conviction. Man, I help me. Oh, man, y'all get, okay, y'all. They have this dialogue, scripture, that, they, they, that Jesus and Satan, Jesus and the devil, whoever you want to call him, that they, notice, they both, they both quote scripture. I'm going to help somebody in the next three Mariner minutes. They both quote scripture. Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy. But it is not enough to know scripture because Satan quotes from Psalm 91. He also knows scripture. The only difference between them quoting scripture is one wrote the scripture, can live the scripture, and sustains the scripture, and the other one did not write anything, cannot sustain it, and can't live it. I thought that was good, y'all. Y'all didn't like that. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Jesus wrote it. He could live it and sustain it. Scripture, here it is. Devils croaks in Psalm 91. Scripture must be read in, in light of who God is, not as a novel, not as a fiction, not as some book, the cat in the hat. No, no, this book must be read with intensity because in it I see myself. In it I see you. But in it I see a risen Savior who saved the world from his own sin. Now, I got to confess, church, that Jesus is tempted. Turn, he's hungry. Turn this stone into bread. Turn, uh, turn this stone. Uh, turn this stone. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. No, I'm hungry. No, I said I'm hungry. For the days I've been out here by myself, I'm hungry. Notice something. There is no harm in wanting bread from a stone. If he was hungry, that seems valid. God promised him something in Deuteronomy that he stands on. Jumping off the temple seemed harmless enough since Jesus would not be hurt. Temporarily compromising worship would not be difficult because he's one third of the Trinity. What's wrong with getting a piece of the pie after all the labor I'm about to give? I, I want to remind you that while all things are permissible, not all things are expedient. Y'all just missed that. Y'all just missed that. Don't get me help somebody. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12 says it this way. Uh, um, someone will say, I am allowed to do anything. Yes, but not everything is good for you. I could say that I am allowed to do anything, but I am not going to let anything make, it, make me a slave. Okay, what do I mean by that? You know, I often tell some people, especially my sons that growing up and, and they were learning about life and they engage, indulge in, 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 in things that may not be fitting for y'all, the things that I engage, indulge in too. The things that many of y'all are trying to hide in your cupboard. I, I, I would always tell my sons, if it, don't let drinking or whatever, don't let drinking become something that you depend on to get through your day. This is for some of y'all too. This is for y'all too. 
No, in order for me to feel good, in order for me to get through something, I had to now self-medicate myself with things and not the spirit. When those things, when you need those things to medicate, to self-medicate, to get through, what you're saying is now that, that I'm putting my trust. See, in my day, we had old English. Okay, y'all don't know about that. No, no, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shelly. We, we had old England. Y'all, y'all got, y'all got, you know, all, y'all, y'all got too much stuff. Y'all got, got too, y'all gonna run y'all crazy. Okay? Y'all don't know what to pick. You don't know what to get. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. This, this whole, this whole thing, my point is this, is that never, I, I'm not, I'm not condemning you for drinking. You know, just if you drink too much, you might need a little help. <laughs> I'm just saying this, don't ever use those things to replace the presence of God's anointing in your life. God's peace, if you trust him enough, will substantiate the power, will give you what is necessary and because you learn how to depend on him and not old English. I ain't gonna tell y'all my whole story. Y'all don't need to know my whole story. I don't need to know my whole story. But here it is now, because we find out as I, as I present this text to you that Jesus has a legitimate need. He tried. He, he had a legitimate need. He was tired. He was vulnerable. But listen to this. Look, I know. Don't miss this part here. Because, this, because the scripture says, while it's lawful, it's not expedient. While it's permissible, it doesn't mean you have to do it. This, this, this scripture is something that I just have a few things to, to close with and I, I'll be out your way. I, I, I just want to hear, I, would have, I really want to hear Ashley sing some more. I really want to hear Ashley sing some more. I really want to hear Ashley sing some more. But as I deal with this legitimate need, Jesus, who is God's son, but is also physical, he's also human, God does not want you to ignore the need. Can I just throw, okay. I remember years ago, uh, I mean decades ago, really decades ago, some of the old saints would tell uh, the younger people, when you get those physical sensations, you know, we got some young folk here. Y'all should be in children's church. When you, when you get those urges, take a cold shower, and the cold shower will just kind of subdue and kind of push those urges away. They lie, they lie, then 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 they lie. Then they, lie. they meant well, they, 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 they meant right, but they lie because you cannot, you cannot subdue those inward internal temptations with a cold shower. They can only be subdued, a legitimate need can only be subdued by something or someone greater. I just thought, y'all, okay, y'all making it hard. I'm going to close this thing, Lewis. I'm making it hard. The, the, the need was what? The need was legitimate. Turn this what? Turn this stone into bread. He's saying, I'm going to feed you. But notice something, Jesus says, no, no, hold on, this is important, I'm almost there. Come on, come on, come on, uh, Donald. Jesus, Jesus said, no, because it, it, is, it, is, it is in the scripture, man or woman cannot live by bread alone. Notice something, that he did not allow his real legitimate physical need to override the process. And all the time he was eating nothing, and here it is, the devil, if you are the son of God, all of this stone to be turned into bread. The scripture said that man cannot live by bread alone. So even if I turn the stone to bread, I, I lose something. Because it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a fair trade. It's just not a fair trade. I, I, it's not a fair trade. I'm getting something, but I'm giving up more. This is something you're... Then the devil took him where? Took him up and showed him a second and a second. Look at that. Verse 5, quickly, verse 5. Then the devil took him up and showed him in a second, in a second, all the kingdoms of the world, in a second. If it's that easy to show me, it must not be 
worthy enough for somebody who has to learn through process. It says, in a second, all the kingdoms of the world, y'all help me, verse 6, and I will give you all this power. Who doesn't want power? And all the wealth, who doesn't want to be wealthy? He said, it, 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 it has all been handed over to me, and I can give it to anyone I choose. All of this is yours, the devil says to him. All of this is yours, but I want your soul. I want your soul. I want your heart. I want your covenant. I want what's intimate with you. I want everything that means anything to you. All of this is yours. Jesus says, worship the Lord God, and him only shall you worship. Jesus now gets into a place where he understands that my position or authority is not worth me forfeiting my right standing with my father. He loved his father so much that he didn't want to injure the relationship. I got to close y'all. I got to get y'all out of here. The third thing he said to him, he then leaves the wilderness. Go look at verse 8. When Jesus speaks then in verse 9, then the devil took him to Jerusalem. This rascal would not leave you alone. Don't think that he'll leave you alone. He might leave you for a season, but he's plotting and planning to come right back. So while he's plotting and planning, I'm getting ready. The third thing, the devil took him to Jerusalem, set him on a high point of the pinnacle. The temple said to him, if you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture says God will order his angels to take good care of you. Y'all help me, y'all help me. It also says they will hold you up with their hands so that even your feet will not hurt on the stones. And Jesus said in verse 12, that's not a fair trade. Because if I get it from you, I got to depend upon you to sustain me in it. Y'all, okay, y'all just missed that. You got to be careful who you take stuff from. Let me say it again. You got to be careful who you borrow stuff from. There are some folk you don't want to borrow from because their interest rate is double to what you ought, don't want to pay. You got to be careful. Oh man, y'all just missed that. Do not put the Lord God, Jesus says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. This is something because now the devil not only wants to meet your legitimate need, he wants to now manipulate your vulnerabilities. In all of these three categories, he really wants to manipulate vulnerabilities. I'm almost there. As I close the day, I just wanted you to know today that it's not a fair trade. Whatever the enemy says to you, you know, quit, don't go to church anymore, don't even worship anymore, don't praise anymore. What difference does it make? Don't, don't, don't take the bait. What does it profit a man or woman to gain the whole world? and lose their soul. It's not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade when you trade, when you trade in permanent joy for temporary happiness. It's not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade if I have to fake me just to hang out with you. That's not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade if I make the investment, but you want to enjoy the harvest without any labor. It's not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade when you settle for who you don't want because you're too afraid to be alone. It's not a fair trade. It's not a fair trade. And as I close the day truth, I want you to know that whatever the enemy, whatever shortcuts he gives you, it's not a fair trade when you can learn process and duplication when you go through the valley of the shadow of death. I learn how to handle these moments. So when the devil comes back around, look at, look at verse 13. When the devil finished with him, he left him for a while. Say a while. He just left me. Just said, said for a while. He just said he is for a while. Said for a while. For a while. It's cause some of y'all, he just left. He just left y'all this morning. He just left y'all ten minutes ago. <laughs> but then Jesus returned to Galilee, and the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. The devil can't stay 
when you keep resisting. The enemy can't stay. He has to leave to recover, to recoup what he just lost. He can't hang with you anymore because he knows that at this point, you are so vulnerable, you're putting your trust in God. Isn't God an awesome church that when you're weak, then you're strong? When you're at your worst, God is at his best. When you're down and out, God is still high and lifted up. When you are wrong, God is still right. When you make mistakes, God corrects them. When you fall, he picks you up. When you go through the valley, he's your morning star. God is alive. God is alive. God is alive. So while I resist him today, I fight him off. I fight him off because there's somebody watching me. I fight him off because there's somebody who needs me to stand flat-footed, stand strong to fight him off because somebody Somebody. I got to go now. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Pastor. Come on. I got to close. I'm tired. I'm tired. I got to go get some chicken. But I want you to know, don't compromise. Don't compromise your giftedness. Because someone doesn't acknowledge it. Don't sit on the sideline because someone hasn't called you. Make yourself known. Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me, Lord. Here am I. If you can use anybody, you can use me. You gotta ask yourself, is what Satan offered me, is it a fair trade? And the bottom line is no. He'll sell your commercial, a 30 second commercial, and send you goods that won't last very long. Stay strong and vigilant in who you are. Peace, love, and power. Thank you so much for joining and watching with us. Join us every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share this message with your family, friends, and your coworkers. Pray on how you can partner with us in sowing a seed that will allow this message to touch people all around the world. We love you, and we know that your best days are yet to come. Don't forget, you are a walking, talking, living, breathing miracle.